Hello everybody, here we go again, Sunday Adelaide here and uh, um, you know we're continuing the topic for this week. So welcome everyone, who do we welcome first? Lola Shorunke, how is California? You're the first one today, welcome. Alewu Okwa, God bless, welcome. Justin, man, you welcome on board. Ludovic, welcome. Rochelle White, how is New Zealand? Andrew Shegu, Mashu Esson, Damilare, Bola D Duro, David Otori, Ola Martin Femi Ige, Nosa Fero, Shimaife, Prince Paul, Kazim Ahmed, Emmanuel Paul, Paul Eric, <laughs> Ufuoma, Rago, Feli, Nkem, Edma, Adideji, Jake Oki, Ronke, Oyetayo, Ale in Paradise, Makarit, Adideji Kola, Amedoze, Ahmed, uh, David Otori, you sent me a message, I did not reply. I can't remember, you have to send it again. Make sure you are writing to the right email. My email is pastor at godembassy.org pastor at godembassy.org I reply all my letters Sebastian James is here is here uh, Richmond Liam Winifred Lino Lyo Charles is here Oluwato is here Best Lewis is here Lati, Ak, Latifu, Aki, Akim Latifu, I was thinking about you the other day, yesterday, praying for you and thinking about you. Welcome back. How is your football career? Abikosh, Meme, blessing. Abikosh is praying for me. She said, I pray that God will give you pleasant surprises this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Samuel Kalu, Venetius Mukwai. Wow, wow. Well, you guys, let's start. Let's start. You, you are already here. Let's go look for our share button. Let's go look for our share button. We keep on talking about calling this week. Go look for your share button and let's go. Let's get ready to go. Go share the link. And once you do, we are going to start again this morning. This morning is going to be marvelous. I am trying to introduce some practical aspect to this teaching on the calling. You know, one of the, when you find my book, who am I and why am I here, you discover that apart from talking about how to discover your calling, we are also teaching you, I mean, that book, you will also read things that hamper your calling. One of the things that hamper your calling that we discussed the other day, yesterday, with the help of, the, of uh, Pastor Success Testimony, is that Success came forward to tell us the story about our inferiority complex almost made him to lose his calling. An inferiority complex will always make you a man placer. Inferiority complex will make you to lose your calling because you will not be able to pursue what you want. You will be pursuing what others want. You want to please other people. That's what inferiority complex does. So inferiority complex will cause you to miss your calling. And, and uh, so, but today, I want to talk about other things that as our environment, how our environment and the, the world we find ourselves in could make us to lose our calling. So this message today is also another practical story, another practical narrative of the life of a real human being, of a real person, of how he almost <coughs> lost his direction in life, how, almost missed his, I, how he almost missed his calling just because of the surrounding that he found himself. And this is going to be very helpful, especially to parents, to young people, to youth. This message today, because I have, like in Ukraine here, we have maybe, if we have, let's say 1,000 Nigerians in Ukraine, 
90% of them are medical students. So I got another medical student today that is going to tell us his own story, how he almost missed his calling. He's in medical school, he's a medical student, but it has not his calling. That's not his calling. Just like success, he's in medical school, you know, he's doing well, studying well, but that's not his calling. How many of us today are pursuing what is not our calling? There are so many. We are pursuing, we are going the wrong direction of our destiny. And let me introduce to you today, Anu Oyo. Hello. How are you, Anu? I'm doing excellent. Please, could you introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ojo Anu Luapo, and people know me as Anu Ojo. I am a final year student in um, Danilo Aliski Medical University. So I'm also part of the 90% of, <laughs> of the Nigerians in Ukraine studying medicine. And I'm also a pastor in Zoe New Church, Lviv. And I'm so grateful to pastor for this wonderful opportunity given to me to, to share my story and my testimony to everyone out there. And I believe you, you're going to be blessed and I believe this will chart the course of your life and change um, your perspective as to what you're doing and if you're also in school, I believe this section would help you discover your calling because this all happened to me and I'm going to share my real life testimony with you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah, so uh, how did you get yourself into medical school? How, how, how come you are in the medical school? How come you are <laughs> reading medicine in the Ukraine? In the Ukraine. And what's your background? Maybe you want to tell us from okay. that. Anything you feel like. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor. So I, I'm, I'm a Nigerian and I'm proudly Nigerian and I'm also from Ekiti State. And uh, my dad is an engineer. His name is Mr. Oluwaferomi Ojo. And my mom also is a nurse. And her name is Mrs. Abimbola Grace Ojo. And I really want to um, celebrate them because uh, my parents are, are, I don't know what to use, but I really appreciate them. And I want this opportunity to appreciate them because they could spend their last dime to make sure that they give us quality education and if my dad is watching or my mom is watching today i want to use this opportunity to appreciate you thank you for your investment in our lives Amen. so let me let me continue to to discuss about how how I many siblings do you have yeah i have um three siblings right now yeah i have three siblings right now girls no i have one lady and a, a girl and a, a brother okay yeah so, now, if you're a Nigerian, you would agree with me that the pride of every parent is to see their children become either of these four professions. First, a medical doctor. Second, an engineer. Third, an accountant. And so fourthly, a lawyer. Taught a lawyer. Taught a lawyer and fourthly an accountant. And every other profession is an addition. So my dad and my mom, they were obviously part of the number. But something about my dad is he's not, he's not an imposter. At least I appreciate that from him because I've heard of many stories of parents enforcing their, their children to do a certain course. But my dad is more of a, a proposer. Well, diplomat. Yeah, he's a diplomatic person. Yeah. <laughs> so let, I'll, I'll use his words and, and you would understand me. He comes and, and discusses with me and tells me that, my, my, my son, I want you to look out. Look at the environment. Look at everybody here. There are a lot of people that go to university and when they finish, they don't have a job. Look at the situation of Nigeria. My son, I don't want you to go and study a course. That when you are done, I will be start begging for jobs. That's so true. So it, it so he tells me, my son, I don't want you to study a course that will make me beg for jobs. That's very logical. Very logical. Yes. So now I understand that what my daddy is saying is there are four jobs. <laughs> there are four jobs <laughs> that guarantee that you. guarantees you. My father will say you a hot cake. <laughs> okay. You be a hot cake. What job? Finish. What are those jobs? <laughs> Being a medical doctor, being an engineer, being a lawyer, and being an, an accountant. You'll be a hot cake. You'll be a hot cake when you're <laughs> going to school. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Obviously, my parents are in the in the science, science field. So that is an engineer. He's a retired engineer. He worked in um, in PHCN, and my mother also is a nurse. So I had affiliation to science, and so between the four, medicine was the most attractive. Was the most attractive to me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was how I got myself into the medical field, and I'm I'm presently studying medicine, and. Uh, right now, I'm I'm almost done with my my, my medical pursuit, and um, I'm in my final year of me, of medicine. So that's how I got into into medicine. But what made what made you to think though right now? Because the title for this message is I are almost, but you didn't. Thank God, you are you are back on track. Yeah. But how you almost? I almost <laughs> missed it. Okay, so um, the, the the thing is, when we are young, what they ask us is. What do you want to be? And when they ask us, what do you want to be in future? What they're asking us is to give a job description. They never ask us about what, you, what are you called to do? What is that? Your heart saying. What, what is your heart saying? And what is, what is that? Have, have, you, have you discovered the, your passion? Have you discovered your calling? Have you discovered the reason why you're here? So when they ask us, for example, ask any... Any child in, 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 in primary school, what do you want to be? So they are actually expecting, people are actually giving the answer of, about job description instead, instead of, of purpose. purpose. Pastor, you got it. So they are asking us for job description. So, so, so at the end of the day, we live, they, they design our mindsets in such a way that we are living for a job and not living to fulfill purpose. So instead of discovering jo- I mean, purpose, you discover people are looking for jobs. Pastor, you got it right. You know, I'm writing a book right now that is calling, st- that is going to be called "Stop Seeking for Jobs." Wow, wow, wow. Maybe, or maybe I should say, never look for a job or stop seeking for jobs. Well. So I'm stop seeking for jobs. I'm writing that book right now. Wow, wow, wow. And that book is going to be released, you know, all over the world, but I'm, I'm targeting it for Nigeria. That people should not look for job. And the editor that is helping me when I told him that I'm, the book is Stop Seeking for Job, <laughs> the person said, okay, if people do not seek for job, what would they what people, would do? What would people do? Yeah. <laughs> so I told them that education is not to seek a job. But the mm. way the, the educational system has been pre- is done now, is for you to look for a job. Yeah. But I want to write that book and really tell people that they should stop seeking for a job. You should mm. never even consider seeking for a job. Yes. You say, what should people do with their lives? Yeah. And that is why you need to read the book. Yes, you yeah. know? So yes. instead of people to be taught on how to discover purpose, mm. well, they are being you know, taught to be able to get a job. a job. And that's what your dad was trying to tell yes, you. Yes, you know, yes. You will go to school so that you could get a job. Get a job. Not just a job, but a good one that I will not beg for. I will not say, please, my son has finished school or he has finished his, his, his university or no. My father said, no, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to beg, but he wants me to, to go into um, a job like So why do you say you almost missed it? Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let me, let, I think I, I will start this by, by talking about how I met you, okay. Pastor. Okay. Or how you heard about Or me. how I heard about you. So I, I got to Ukraine in um, the year 2010. Yeah. So... There is there's practically no Nigerian that gets to Ukraine without hearing about Pastor Sunday. At least you must hear about Pastor Sunday. You might not know in details what he's into. You might not know how phenomenal he is. But you just get to just hear about Pastor Sunday. So I heard about Pastor Sunday. And my... my, my okay, let me, let me first beg, please. Viewers, don't judge me. Please, don't judge don't me. Throw, throw <laughs> yeah, don't throw those at me because... I'm sure many of you were also in my shoes because when I had the pastor Sunday, I was like, okay, he's one of those pastors, like generally pastors, that's it. Especially mega pastors. Yeah, a mega pastor. Big cars, big house, yeah, exactly, big offerings. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I wasn't so much interested in him. I was like, well, he's just one of them. And if I if I want to listen to his to his message, I can listen to his message on YouTube or anywhere. But all the while, I, I follow Miles Monroe. Um, I, I, Miles Monroe has played a very huge role in my life and in who I am today. So one, one morning, I got a call from a friend of mine that also knows about my affiliation with Dr. Miles Monroe. It was very early in the morning. I got this call and the person told me, Anu, can you believe? I said, what? 
it's just morning. He said, Mouse Muro is dead. I was like, Mouse Muro is dead? No, no, I said it's a lie. I just went on my laptop, Googled it, and to my greatest surprise, my, my, my role model and my hero was dead. <sighs> if I can remember vividly, I don't think I went to school that day. Mm. Because I was so down, I was like, Lord. And then what really broke my heart was the kind of death it was. It was a tragic death. So I was so down. So I just was just thinking about, Lord, why, 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 why? So as I was searching for why, I stumbled again on Pastor Sunday Adilaja. So, Pastor Sunday was releasing videos, and um, I don't know if many of you can remember when he was releasing videos about um, Pastor Miles and trying to, to explain to people um, the concept of death and things like that. So, Pastor said a lot of things that blew my mind. But because of my nature of being a critical thinker, and when I hear something that is against the status quo, I'm, I'm interested. Pastor made this statement. Pastor said he prefers to die young than to die old. Trust me. That judgmental spirit came up. And I was like, at this point, Pastor Sunday has missed it. I was like, how would Pastor Sunday say he wants to die young? Come on. I was like, this is what people go to church. They sow seed for long life. People go and pray and fast for for 10 days to live long and yes, Pastor Sunday saying he, he, he prefers to die young. I was like, no, I called my friend and I said, come and listen to Pastor Sunday. I think, I agree with him with everything. He's a, he's a, he's a great man, but at this point, uh, he has missed it. He has missed it, no. He has missed it. He has missed it. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, no. But because I like, I like bringing things into subjective analysis, I took interest in what you said so I started following all of your videos. I watched the videos. Then you, then you didn't just stop releasing videos. You started um, producing articles. So I read the articles. Then while I was following and I got to understand what you were saying, that the main goal for us to be alive is not just to, is not to, to just live for any reason. Or but live to, long. Or to live long. But our goal is to die empty, to die fulfilled, that, that is not just, it's not about the, the length of days from our perspective, but it's about living to fulfill a purpose. And you give then I read your book about um, Dr. Miles Murrow and I got I got a full understanding of what you were saying. And it blew my mind because I got to discover that it's true. Jesus Christ lived 33 and a half years, and the impact is still till this day and will forever be. And so, I took interest in you. So, after, after a while, I listened to your messages, but I wasn't, I wasn't so much um, like a follower like that time, until a friend of mine told me about History Makers Training, that Pastor Sunday used to organize History Makers Training. And he was like, that it would it be very good for me to attend. So I'm like, okay, Pastor Sunday. So I said, okay, okay. If he's not organized, maybe at least, maybe it's just for his name. Maybe some other people will come and facilitate and he will just be there and maybe he might not show up or something like that. So I said, let me just give it a try. And just, just, just so you know, viewers, this is issue Maker's training was this January. Wow. This January. <laughs> so so, I, I, so <laughs> I, I got into the history makers training this January. And you get to meet you got to meet on Sunday only this year. This year. Even though you've been in Ukraine for five years. For five years. You, well, you never believe you could meet. No. No. <laughs> Let me tell you my story about my first day in that training. You'll be surprised. So when I got in for the training, we got into his house. I said, okay, so I know you are in Pastor Sunday at the larger's house. I said, okay. So I was waiting to see him. Maybe he will come in with his entourage or maybe bodyguards. He will come in with bodyguards, you know. 
so that he will be safe. So during the section that was meant for pastors for pastor, I just saw him coming inside. There was no. I, he just somebody just walked past. So I'm like, okay. So he got to the front, and I'm like, just like that. That's that's how Pastor Sunday just came inside. So I was like, okay. So for the first ten minutes, I was I was stunned. I was dazed. I was like, okay. So this is Pastor Sunday, and guys, trust me, the way Pastor laughs in this Facebook. That's how he loves real life. And, if, and the thing about it is that you're missing his, his handshakes. Because when pastor laughs, he will shake you. So, high five. High five. And yeah, and, so it, not shake, but he's going to give you a high five. So I saw how pastor was down to it. How he was humble. I was stunned. I was like, Lord, this is Pastor Sunday. He took everybody as a friend. He was going to laugh with you. He was going to hug you, give you a high five. For like first 15 minutes of my life, of, of, my, of my time there, I was like, okay, this is actually real. I was stunned. This is not what I expected. I expected a pastor Sunday that would come in and everybody, and like, you know, there will be protocols, maybe with, with, with shades, that nobody must trespass and nobody must touch. But... Pastor said teaching us about understanding. Lord. The focus that HMT was on understanding. He said, get life and get understanding. Trust me. My testimony was up until that time, I was just existing. Because I got to discover that true living is living, fulfilling your destiny and fulfilling your purpose on a daily basis. Pastor taught us about understanding and, and I, I, saw, I saw my life right in front of me and I was like, Anu, Anu, you've not been living. You've just been existing. It is time for you to start living. Now, what blew my mind was when pastor gave an opportunity for us because pastor likes, I discovered that from pastor, that pastor likes getting feedbacks. He wants to know what, what is happening with the words he's saying to you. He wants, he wants to get a feedback. He wants to get a response. So pastor was calling people to come out to just give a feedback based on what they've learned and what has happened based on his teachings. I was scared to come out because... If you know Pastor Sunday, oh dear. <laughs> if you know Pastor Sunday, <laughs> Past, no Pastor, detail is missed. Oh dear. <laughs> Pastor pays attention to every little detail. Every li- I remember that, that training, Pastor. Somebody came out and somebody said thank you. And Pastor was like, Why are you thanking me? What have I done? Why are you saying thank you? I've not done anything to you. The person, the person was even like, he didn't even know that he said thank you. <laughs> yeah, trans, 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 trans. Yeah. He said he didn't even know he said thank you. So he didn't even know he said it. Yeah, he didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Reflect. And so, I summoned courage. Why? Because my heart... Someone courage to do what? To go out. Okay. Because my heart was... Like, I, I could really... To go out and give a... And to give a, a feedback. feedback. To give, go back and give a feedback because in my heart I knew what was happening or what was happening I knew, the revelation, I knew the revelation that I got in my spirit and I knew the revolution that was happening from my inside so my, my goal was just to go out and say pastor thank you for what you have done to me so I got out, a lot of people spoke before I spoke so it was my turn <laughs> so now I said that I wanted to introduce myself in a different way. Okay? So, I said, my name is... Do, do what I said. I said, my name is Ujuan Oluwapo. And the pastor was like, sorry? What, what did you just say? Trust me. The next 10 minutes while I was standing outside there was pastor teaching me how to correctly say and pronounce my name 
in a way that I would communicate my name such that the people that listen to me would forever remember my name. Because I said, I was when I said it. How to introduce yourself. How to introduce myself. Because mm-hmm. I was when I said I want to introduce myself differently. <laughs> and pastor was teaching me because of his attention to details. So I was there. And the pastor said that for me to make that decision, I will be remembered. I said, Amen. I thought that was the best for prayer. That decision, what for decision? that decision. For the decision to introduce myself differently. Okay. That every other person that spoke did not say that. But for me to say that, it means I will be known. And so I continued giving my feedback. In five minutes to six minutes or seven minutes of my of me talking, everybody was standing. <laughs> Pastors stood, the whole everybody was standing and they were giving ovation, clapping, celebrating. And Pastor said these words to me that transformed and changed my life. Pastor asked me that what am I doing and where am I? What am I studying or something? And I said, Pastor, I'm studying medicine. Pastor was like, What are you doing in the medical school? How, how can you be studying medicine? So I was like, Okay. Pastor said, You are an enlightener. You are a touch house. You 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 should bring illumination to the minds of people. He said, He said, He told me, look. Everybody spoke, but it's only when you spoke that everybody stood up. It means that you should bring illumination to the minds of people. You should bring revelation into God, into people's minds. So, he said these words to me. Hmm. So, to many people, that was just, that was just another time where pastor was being, being exceptional. But to me, it was a pivotal point in my life. It was a turning point in my life because... Pastor, in less than 10 minutes, just told me that this is what you are called to do. Not just to be in the hospital. Not just to just be there treating people. But God has given you talents. He has given you the gifts. He has made you, he has perfectly designed you to bring illumination to the minds of people. To be a, to, to bring to bring an enlightenment to bring light to people wow so i told my friend after the training that <laughs> you see i've been dead all this while and i i just discovered that i need to start living so i told him that i need to subject myself to serious self-education into the area that pastor talked about and i told him that in six months in six months i want to see what i'll I'll come out with so from february to to july pastor i read the the most amount of books from february to july than i've ever read all my life because just like many, just like many medical students or many many people, the only thing that we that we are so focused about is education. Medicine. It's just medicine. And so, I went and I studied. And pastor, I must say, and I want to thank God for your life because when you were teaching when you were teaching the Kingdom series, you said something that 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 brought light into my spirit. You said that God did not create any man to just get a job he said god did not create any man to work for money he said god created us as an answer to a problem on earth and so i got to understand that when anyone dies on earth and people cry out to god for example in america due to gun violence if someone's family member dies due to gun violence and people are crying to God that God, please help us, God, solve gun violence. You said, you said God, God, God would not come down to solve it. But God's answer is in a man that is sent. And so he sends a man. He gives birth to. Yeah, that he gives birth to that man with 
that purpose to come and bring a solution. <laughs> and so I got an understanding that I am not here by mistake. I am not here just to just get a job. I'm not here to just be a medical doctor. I am here as a solution to a problem. I am here as an answer to the cry of generation. And so it, so, so it dawned on me that my life is more than myself. My life purpose is bigger than me. And I have to discover it and I have to fulfill it. So it blew my mind and I said, yes, yes, thank God. Thank God that my path did not just cross with Pastor Sunday. Thank God because my path was led to him. And I learned from him. And he revealed to me that, listen, this is what you are called to do. I almost missed it. But thank God. <laughs> thank God. Because I would have been trapped sitting down with my stethoscope, with my beautiful white lab coat, and just be given treatment prescriptions. and prescriptions. So, how, 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 how did I discover it? Before you go ahead, uh, Anu, yes, before Anu goes ahead, I want to answer the questions that some of you are asking. You are asking if I have training that I do on a yearly basis or regular basis. Yes. Our next training is called History Makers Training. History Makers Training is going to be in November. So if you want to come and attend my trainings, it's called History Makers Training. It's a similar training to what Anu is talking about. History Makers Training. The next one is going to be in November 6th to 12th. 6th to 12th of November, 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 2016, you go write to guest at godembassy.org, guest at godembassy.org, G-U-E-S-T at godembassy.org. That is where you will be able to learn more about coming to visit us. Or you could write me directly at pastor, to pastor at godembassy.org, pastor at godembassy.org. But, uh, you know, let's keep on listening to how the life of Arno began to change. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. <laughs> pastor, I'm so happy that today is a Monday. And the reason is because I've, I, I came to discover that Monday, to a lot of people, is one of their worst days. And why? Because they are going back to a cage, to a box, to a workplace that they hate. They are going back to the place where uh -huh. they are going back to the place where they know that they are not fulfilled. Yes. And so I'm, I'm so happy because today is a Monday, and Pastor, just listening to the to the to the testimony of Mr. Alexandra and his wife yesterday. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> what what is, what what I a lot of things stood out for me, but one thing that stood out for me was it is never too late for you. It is never too late. The, the 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 woman at the age of over fifty went back hmm. to do her masters, hmm. and she's in she's in her fifties and she's fulfilling her purpose. Come on. Viewers, no matter your age, I want you to know that it is never too late for you to discover your calling. And you can start it from today. I want to encourage everybody to please go back to the first message that pastor started teaching about, about, about your calling. And I think the first one, if I can remember, is who am I? Yeah. Pastor started with who am I? And then he went about and talking about your uniqueness, being your, your area of calling, your background and your experience. I want to encourage everybody, please go back and listen to it. I have listened to it. I'll continually listen to it because I need more clarity and I also need to amplify in what God has called me to do. But let me continue about how I discovered my own. I, I learned what health is, the definition of health, Pastor. Health. Of health. Health. Yes, yeah, of health. Now, according to World Health Organi Organization, health is a state of physical mental and social well-being and it is not just the, the the absence of disease or infirmities but i got to discover that pastor our focus in medicine most times is on the physical part 
of mental or physical part of well-being just to bring treatment to court surgery and all of those stuff but after you say those words to me that that my calling is to bring enlightenment is to bring light to, to the minds of people then the mental part stood out for me the mental part stood out for me that because I discovered that I, I had so much affiliation, I had so much inclination to speaking with people. I had so much affiliation to bringing liberation to the minds of people. I could not just stand someone being ignorant about something. I wanted to just bring illumination to their minds. I wanted to just teach them. So I, I just wanted to just deal with people and converse with them. And so pastor, I discovered that my path is not to dissect people. It's not to to fix people to heal the body to heal the body no but the mind but the mind but hmm. the mind and so I as a doctor you should act you are actually called to to doctor not body yes but to doctor people's mind of the mind to be a doctor to be a physician to the mind to the mind hmm. yes sir rather than being a physician to the body to the body hmm. to the body and so I got to discover that mental health doesn't hmm. just have to do with with um, mental disorders mm. because most times when we hear mental health we, we think of mental Physical disorders again. Yes. but I got to discover that mental health has to do with subjective well-being it has to do with self -eff self -eff efficacy it has to do with self autonomy it has to do with the actualization of one's intellectual and emotional potentials and so I discovered that that was what I, I had interest in I wanted to just talk with people and to bring them out of, of, of darkness in their mind and in their mental faculty. And so that was how I got a direction, a precise direction to what God has called me to do. And I discovered that my, my assignment is not to the physical realm, it's not to the physical body, but to the mental part, to people's minds, to bring illumination to people's minds. To bring revolution to people's minds. And like you always say that we shouldn't just stop at discovering it. That the discovery is just the seed. But you always tell us that the seed on its own will not produce any result. Mm. But the seed has to grow into a tree. And when the seed has grown into a tree, then the tree can begin to produce fruits that would be benefits to people around them. So, Pastor, after I discovered this, I started feeding myself with books. I started reading books. I started reading. I started listening to your to your messages. I read your books. I I ex I started reading divers. I started reading. I, I became a voracious reader. I, I started reading, 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 just to just enlarge my my my, my mind. And so, and were you listening to the messages as well, Pastor? Starting from, starting from the messages that you talked about, the the the, the word, how the word system enslaves us, Pastor. That that message was was mind blowing, and I encourage everybody listening, please. I'm not trying to to advertise, Pastor. This is not this is not this is not advertisement. This is this is real life. I want you to go back to all of Pastor's life videos. And start from that, that message when Pastor was talking about how the world system enslaves us. The, the sad thing about it is education is part of it. Pastor explains it's part of what? It's part of the of, of the world system to enslave us. Pastor taught us that education is designed to train you. So, to work for somebody. To become a slave to somebody. To be a slave to somebody. Or to a job. Or to a job. Or to work for money. To live. To earn a living. And pastor is like, no, God did not create you to live to earn a living. God created you to live and to fulfill his purpose for your life. To fulfill destiny. But education will train you to be a medical, top, a medical doctor so that you can help people in the community. And that's all. So, listening to pastor messages made me understand that life is more than what I have known it to be. <laughs> life is more than it, trust me. 
trust me, life is more than pastor, pastor, pastor. Life is more than just going to church on Sunday. Life is more than just you speaking in tongues. Life is more than you just going to give your tithe and offerings. He said, life is more than that. Life is more. I, di- I discovered that life is more than that. That is more than that. God. I, I discovered that pastor when you were teaching about kingdom, the kingdom message. Hmm. I discovered that what we've been hearing in church, and I, 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 and I say this because I, I also pastor a church, that what we've been teaching people, we've been, we've been creating a group of people that are using God. Hmm. And it's paganism. Pastor, Pastor defines as paganism. That most times we just we, the reason why we go to church is that we go to church to just get a miracle from God. Ask yourself, why do you go to church? Because of blessings. We go to church because we have we, we are going for blessings for miracles. We want we want financial increase. We want breakthrough in our in our academics. That's why we go to church. And Pastor revealed to us that the, the, the message, the gospel that transforms lives, the gospel that transforms nations is the gospel of the kingdom. And that is the message that Jesus preached. Pastor said something that blew my mind. He said, God must never said it that we are the light of the church or we are the light of or we are the salt of the church. God said we are the light of the world. What that meant to me was that the world is my stage. The church, the church is not my stage. The, the, is not my, the world is my, ch- is, my, is my stage. And so, I, I, got, I got a mind shift. I got a mind shift. I got a mind shift. That no, no, no. I am an answer. To my world, I'm an answer. So now I've discovered that I'm an, I'm an answer to the world of mental slavery. I am, I'm an answer to the to the world of, of mental darkness. And so, just listening to pastor, it blew my mind. I must tell you. I must tell you. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. Life, life changed for me. 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 It was more than it was more than just more than just going to church. It was more than just going to to school. It's more than just going to work. It's about living a purpose a purpose driven life. And so. I started channeling my, my energy to that course. I started studying, I started reading about it. And what, 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 what transformed my life again was when Pastor was talking about how God, God's creation is always preceded by purpose. That purpose precedes creation. And that the discovery of purpose is the beginning of true living. And so, I started learning. I started reading. Not just my Bible. I was reading my Bible. And I always encourage people, if you read your Bible alone, mm. you will only be influential in church. Mm. You, 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 not, you have no voice out of the church. Because the only things you can say are scriptures but I started reading out of out of the, the, the norm I started reading different books started listening to, to messages that will bring life and light to my spirit and just this July this is this is my testimony this is my testimony just this July before the before the end of June the Spirit of God told me that something was going to happen in my life from July to July 10th. I told my church members that the Spirit of God told me, but I didn't know what it was. was I, he didn't give me details. He didn't tell me exactly what was going to happen. So I was thinking it was just going to be a, 
a, a financial breakthrough or something marvelous or just maybe I'll just be the spirit in the Lord's day and something like that. But it happened to be that time when pastor also was teaching about, about the kingdom. And I went for a retreat with my, with my administrative team in my church. And while I slept and I woke up, God gave to me a project that I'm to embark on. And just before that, Pastor was talking about a topic that, I remember the topic exactly because that was where it started. Pastor was talking about what successful people know. Mm. Yes, yes, what successful people know. After that message, God, normally when I listen to pastor, I don't always, I, what I just say is good morning, sir, and I get my notepad and I start writing. A lot of people used to comment there, but I'm not so much in charge of the comments, and mine is just, just keep learning. But that day, I could not withhold it. Because I just had these words in my mind, and these words were 100% mind revolution. 100% mind revolution. That was what I, I typed. I, I didn't even type it for pastor to even read it. I just typed it because this was what I felt. And fortunately for me, pastor read it. <laughs> <laughs> and pastor unknowingly just gave the description of the first book in my life I'm writing. And the pastor said, that is a book right there. That is an amazing book. 100% my and Pastor was laughing. I said, Pastor, you're laughing. You don't understand what you just did. You just gave me, you just. And Pastor said, That is a book right there. And so after I went for my retreat, God told me, Son, I want you to start an initiative. And the initiative will be called 100% Mind Revolution Initiatives. And He said, What I'm giving you is that I'm telling you that you should go and illuminate the minds of the world, illuminate the minds of people. And bring transformation into their lives. And that was how, just this July, <laughs> just this July, God told me this. And, and so, under, under that, that part, God was explaining to me different. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Anu is in medical school. Yes. <laughs> and this is, look what God is asking him to do. This is calling. And meanwhile, he's whining, you know, his time in medical school. Okay, to answer the people who are asking the question, where can you get all these teachings that we are talking about? They are all there on my blog, sundayadelajablog.com. Sundayadelajablog.com. You see over 500 messages over there. Five Sunday Adelaja, I mean, live broadcast. It could be video or audio, uh, live broadcast or video broadcast or uh, video blog. Or, you know, just go and, or you could even go to YouTube. And uh, Sunday Adelaide official, my YouTube uh, channel, and yeah, and get get the message. Also, you know, you can listen to them as well over there. So you know, and then some of you are coming a little bit late. Yeah, I want to remind you that on every day I come on, every day I come on in the morning is seven thirty. It's always seven thirty a.m. Nigerian time, seven thirty a.m. British time, and two thirty a.m. Eastern time in America. And um, yeah, and in the evening, every evening I come as well. And every evening is 7 uh, p.m., uh, that is British time, 7 p.m. Nigerian time, and 2 p.m. American Eastern time. So if you have not shared the link, please go ahead and sh begin to share this link. We're going to continue listening to Anno right now, but go look for your share button and share the link, everyone. Let's share the link before we progress, okay? Thank you, Anno. Here we are. Yes, Thank you so much, sir. So, Pastor, while I was thinking of my own life and my own testimony, I had, I had this beating in my mind and I had this in my mind to address three categories of people. The first, the first set of people are the parents. The parents. A huge amount of... So, the parents, parents actually contribute largely to people missing their calling in life. Yes, sir. The parents, the schools, the, 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 all these things that are supposed to yes, help people to discover help. their calling and purpose, yes. they are the ones leading them out of the way yes. of their purpose and calling. Yes, life. Okay? 
So I, I wanted to I wanted to use the opportunity to to encourage parents not to enforce anything on their children. I want to use the opportunity to encourage parents to spend time in helping to discover the purpose that God has created their children. But they cannot say now they don't know how to do it because the book is in English. Yes, I've sir. released the book. Yes, Who am I? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, why am I here? How yes, to sir. discover yes, your purpose and calling. Yes, and the teachings here. And, teachings, yes, and the, we have the whole series now yes, that are here, you know, for a whole week now I've been talking about. Even somebody said, even one, each one of them is enough Pastor, to just discover. Yes, sir. And I've given more than eight already. Yes, sir. And so, so it's no more excuse that I cannot... No, how to discover what do you think? Yes, sir. I agree, sir. I agree, sir. Just one, just one. Let me prescribe one for you, just in case you're yeah, yeah, doubting. Pastor said, and this one stood out for me because I was called names. Sorry, sorry, please. Yeah, Akin, Akin, Akinde Victor is saying, guest at godembassy.com is not going to. That is not what I said. You need to learn to listen very well, Akinde. <laughs> you know, yes, listen to details. I said, guest at God. Embassy. If you know my website, it's not God's without S, not God's embassy. It's God Embassy. One word. God Embassy. One word. Dot not com dot org. Dot org. That's why I'm not getting your letters. And you will be accusing me that I'm not replying your letters because you don't send it to the right place. Yeah, so guest at God, God Embassy. embassy. One word, godembassy.org. Then if you want to go to my blog, that is not for letter, that is a website. It's sundayadilajiablog.com. Thank you, I'm sorry. No problem, sir. So first of all, as, as a medical doctor, I want to prescribe one for, for the viewers because this relates so much to me. And when you're talking to me... One what? Yeah, I want, to, I want to prescribe one of the videos that would help in help, helping them in, disco in discovering their calling. Okay. And Pastor, you're talking about how how um, we could discover our calling by what people and by the names or the things that people victimize us with. <laughs> it, it resounded in me because... <laughs> what day was that? You can't remember. I can't remember exactly. Okay. But, there... but you're talking about it. Yeah, it maybe starts No, there. what was the name? You remember the name? Yeah, I think you're talking about uniqueness. Okay, your, your, your uniqueness. uniqueness. Yeah, your, uniqueness. Difference your difference and uniqueness. Your difference and uniqueness, yes. yes. <laughs> so for me, mine was, was like this. When I was in secondary school, <laughs> When I was secondary school, now, if you're, if you're from the West in Nigeria, you understand this word. My, my colleagues, they always to call me Bebeto. Or, or, or another synonym is Oya. Puma. Meaning, some, is so, what it means is somebody that is too forward. You are too forward. You are too forward. And how was I too forward? Let me just tell you my story. So they were trying to, like, yeah, humiliate you. Yeah, to victimize me. To make me feel like what I'm doing is bad. What was I doing? The teacher came into the class and asked if and asked who wanted to be the, the class rep. What I mean, who wants to be the class monitor? Nobody raised up their hands. Only Anuju decided to be responsible. Hmm. And everybody came and were like, Bebeto, oh yeah, why are you too forward? What is wrong with you? She gave everybody the norm. Why do you why not allow her to choose? And Fast forward time, I got to discover that what they, they were calling me Oya because I'm a leader. Because to be forward, a leader is always ahead. A leader is always forward. A leader is always taking responsibilities. So what they were calling me Bebeto, they were calling me Oya. But just getting to understand based on what person was teaching about your uniqueness, about what people criticize you with, I discovered that, yes, I'm a leader. So, call me me better all your life. What you're just saying is, you're telling me that I am a leader. And the same thing goes to everybody listening to, to us right now. What are those names that people call you? Yours might be Oversabi. <laughs> what if, is that? Oversabi means you like doing everything. <laughs> you do too much. See? Oh, okay. That means you are too meticulous. If they call you Oversabi... Or diligent. Yeah, you're too diligent. Exactly. If they call you Oversabi... What that means is that you are diligent and that you can make so much progress and you can make so much success compared to any other person. Mm. So if they call you Oversabi, tell them thank you. Go and write it down. Oversabi means <laughs> diligence. 
that means I am a diligent person. That means I will make more success. I will make more progress than these people that are calling me over Sabi. They are telling you your calling. So I said I want to address three three people, Pastor. So I've already addressed the, 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 the parents. The next one to address is students. And people like me that are in university. I want to encourage you to apply these two principles that I learned. The first is don't be boxed by education. Don't be boxed and don't be enslaved by just reading only what is in your field. Mm -hmm. Explore. If you have get 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 a big a big post in your room, write it down. Explore. Explore because that was what I used. I explored. You are I, trying to say don't be uh, caged into your no educational curriculum. Yes, sir. Okay, so don't be limited don't be by limited. your subject and field of yes, sir. studies. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. don't be limited. Don't be limited. I have many friends. My friend, Bamisha Victor, my very good friend, is in medical school with me. <laughs> but that guy is a president, that guy is a politician. I have and many he's studying. Yeah, and he's, yeah. And he's, he's a medical student with me. I have many friends too that are comedians. At the medical school. You guys know Chris Clown, right? Chris what? Chris Clown. Chris Clown. Chris Clown is, 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 is a comedian in, in Harkov right now. Just in in Nigerian? Case, he's a Nigerian. Okay. Just in case you don't know, he's a medical student. You would ask me what is he doing in medical school. The guy is making it right now in the world of comedy. So don't be limited by your curriculum. Trust me. Ex just, just go out and try it. Try different things. It will surprise you that by you trying, you will discover what God has called you to do. And also, be accept responsibilities. I discovered that, Pastor, we have a, a, a generation of youth that don't want to be responsible. We want to run away from responsibilities. We want to, we want to deflect responsibilities. But trust me, if you accept res responsibilities, responsibility is, is coming from two words, response and ability. When you are responsible, you are responding to your ability. You, you might never discover your ability if you are not responsible. So be responsible. And by doing that, you will get to discover what you have inside. <laughs> so students, I, I want to... I'm a student too. I'm not yet done. I want to encourage you to please be responsible. Don't run away from responsibilities. It will help you discover your calling. How did I discover mine? I, was, I, I, I chose to be responsible. When they ask who wants to take a, a, a task, I go. Who wants to talk, I talk. Who wants to give a speech, I give a speech. Wherever, I was just responsible. And now, I'm talking to you by being responsible. And pastor, the last thing the people I want to talk to is to the people that are not in school now, but the people that are working. I mean, those who are in the workforce right now. And my, my advice to them, based on what I've learned from you, is that please don't work for money. Because if you, Pastor said, if you work for money, you'll be a slave to money. And God did not create us to be slaves to money. <laughs> so if you're working, Pastor said, your, your work should be a platform. It should be, it should be an avenue where you fulfill purpose. And it's not too late for you to fulfill your purpose. So if you're working, whatever place you're working, I want you to know that it is not too late for you to start fulfilling your purpose even in that place. And if it will cost you to have to leave that place and then to refine yourself and to discover yourself and start fulfilling purpose, trust me, it is better for you to do that. And I've discovered people, just, let me just share this testimony with you. One of the things I discovered with pastor is that it's not only pastor that makes a difference here. If you come to pastor's house, you almost feel intimidated, trust me. <laughs> because everybody here, you almost feel everybody, everybody is fulfilling destiny, not in some small little small, corner. <laughs> you are hearing of thousands, millions. The, 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 the thing that I, I admire about pastor, and pastor, I want to say this to you, is that you, you are a leader that reproduces himself in the lives of people. 
And I've heard testimonies of people that I've met. So I was telling my, 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 my colleagues here that I don't think there's anybody that will meet pastor. Meet pastor and his life will not be changed. Everybody that has met Pastor Sunday has a testimony. Has a testimony. I'm, and I'm not saying testimony that we come to give in our churches on Monday, on Sundays. Testimonies that God got me pass my exam with 50 over 80. That's not testimony. Pastor, 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 that, that's not testimony. Testimony is not that I, I was working and I slept and I woke up and thank God for giving me. No, that's not testimony. Testimonies of real impact. Testimonies of you affecting the world, being an answer to the world. And Pastor, lastly, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you for the opportunity you have given to me. Thank you for, for opening yourself up to me. With these few days I've spent with you, I've discovered that there is no holding back, that there is no cage for me. As a matter of fact, there is no limitation for me. I have the whole world to go. Like the whole world has been created for me to go out. Like there's no holding back for me. I've discovered that what you did, I can even do more. How old am I? Young, young boy. I have enough years to fulfill destiny. And that if you can do it, pastor, if you can do it, and if other people that have come to meet you are doing it, I know, Joe, you can. And you can even do much more. And this is, the, this is what I've received from you. And I want to thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you richly. God bless you richly, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. You have blown us up again. <laughs> you have just expanded our horizon. You, and you have just stretched us. And to, to, you have brought us the world of possibilities. Yes, and I'm sure that everybody that is watching this agree that you have brought us to a world of possibilities. Yes, well, you, this is just the first time you are meeting me, right? The yes, second sir. time. Second time. This is only the second time he's meeting me. So the fact that he's living in Ukraine doesn't mean that he's living in my house or he's seeing me every time. No, mm -hmm. it's just the second time he's coming here. Second time he's seeing me. But because he's seeing me every day. Yes. He's following me every day. He's reading my books every day. And, and also watching the video and, you know, following the program every day. So it's about change. It's about what success spoke about yesterday. It's about renewing your mind. It's about, you know, re-engineering yourself through the truth that you're hearing here. Right. So if you will go and find an opportunity or a place to isolate yourself and rebuild yourself, you can actually construct your life. Rebuild yourself, re-engineer your mind, you re-engineer your destiny just through these messages. So everything is done, it's not because he's, you know, he's living here or he's being trained by me like the Russians that I have to train. But this has also the same training I'm giving you here every day. Go take those teachings and go and begin to apply them. These are the same training. Somebody is asking me, why don't I make HMT online? This is HMT online you are getting. You are already having the materials. Yes. Go take them, discipline yourself, lock yourself up once in a while, once maybe, you know, once in a month or something. Lock yourself up and just begin to dwell in those messages and renew your mind through them. It is the world that makes you who you are. You know, as you think, if you could think properly, you become aware of anything you want. As you think, so you are. As a man thinks in his mind, so he is. So you will become who, who you, whatever you program yourself to become. So you need just to reprogram your mind. And there are no greater tools than these messages that are coming from here. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. I know Oluwako Ojo. I know Oluwako Ojo. You've been great. Thank you so and, much. And you know, I, I don't doubt it that you you call the anointing, you call the grace, thank you so and you have we are walking right into your destiny. Thank you, sir. You see, this message is called "I How I Almost Missed My Calling." He almost missed his calling because he was sent to a medical school. <laughs> and, and he would have been doing medicine wearing the white uh, garment and <laughs> testosterone or whatever. And yeah, and be, you know, doing the wrong thing. Where I supposed to be a speaker and an illuminator. And, uh, but thank God we came across uh, this message. He came across Pastor Sunday and one meeting, just one time, yeah. one meeting. 
Yeah. Was enough for him to thank God. He decided to come forward that day to give this to, to tell to talk, yes. so I could address him in particular. And uh, so, well, I've been addressing all of you for three months now. So you know, go sit down with these messages and get serious about them. Go work on yourself. You know, the only difference is that if he's going to, uh, you if you are going to be here for HMT, you are staying here confined. You know, by us, we build uh, the environment for you. We confine you here and we make you to study. But you can do that by yourself. Take all the messages, the direction that you, if it is financial breakthrough you need, take all the series on finances and go and, you know, renew your mind and begin to practice them. If it's about calling, you want to discover yourself, take all the series about calling. If it's about the kingdom, you want to discover what is the kingdom, what the kingdom is about, take all the series about the kingdom and go and renew yourself. If it's about prayers, take all the series about prayers and go and renew yourself. So that is why I'm taking all these things series by series. It's about exploring in the world and becoming the best in the world. Take the one about the loss of the life is predictable. And then you, if, if you cannot love people, if you have relation problem with your relationship, take the one about love. Loving God is, you know, loving people. So, you know, take all the series. I have all these things, all these messages in packages, in series. Take the one that applies to you, that, you know, that uh, applies to where you want to be or where you want to go. And by the time you finish listening to them over and over again, you'll be a new man. You'll be a different person. So please, let's go ahead and share the link right now. Go ahead and share the link. And as you are sharing the link, I'm going to read some of the comments that you all are writing. So let, also, go ahead and write your comments. Let's see what you, are, what you got from this, from, this, uh, from this teaching. Please, will you go and write your comments? Let's hear what you are thinking about the, the testimony of Anu today. Okay, Perez Marie say, I, come, I came in late. Where can I find the financial series? Well, all these teachings are on my blog. Sunday at DeLajaBlog.com Sunday at DeLajaBlog.com You could go to the video blog and you'll see all the teachings there. Or you could go to audio, I mean, you could go to a live broadcast and listen to all of them there. Or you could go to my, my YouTube page, Youth Sunday at Delaja Official is called, and you'll be able to see all the recordings there. So all these things are available out there. You just need to show some, <laughs> some enthusiasm and so. Yeah. Shidi Obinello said, A success without a successor is a failure. Pastor Sunday is reproducing himself in us, and this is real success. Yes. How do I share the link? When you, you go back to your uh, timeline and press the share, you'll see the share button just under the video on your timeline. You'll see the, you'll see the share button. Just press it. That's how you share it to your own, to your own uh, page. And then from there, you know, other people could share it from you as well. That is uh, Olu Elijah who said that. Daini Peter said, please, how and where can we get the messages series? Like, I just answered that question. Uh, Kate said, what is the cost for this November training? I don't know. You know, you need to write a guest at God Embassy, one word, godembassy.org. They will explain everything to you. I just don't have an idea. It's not, it's the administration that does that. Um, okay. Lola Shorunke said, Thank you, Pastor Anu. You have helped us to see the process of renewing the mind while we were listening to you. Blessings, sir. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank God for Pastor. <laughs> yeah, thank you for speaking to us. <laughs> Layo Shouse Emmanuel said, Pastor Anu has spoken the shirt this morning. Wow, 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 <laughs> is all I can say there. You re reminded me of certain life principles this morning that are necessary for success in life. And Pastor Sunday, what shall we say? We'll tell you via Skype, Pastor. Eshe, eshe, sir. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Pastor Lolayo. Susan said, Dr. Sunday, what of someone who feels they have lost their calling? What happens? You cannot lose your calling because the Bible says that uh, the, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You just need to get yourself back to where you had fallen and, uh, re, you know, go back and believe again. You believe again. God has never given up on you. Maybe you have given up on yourself, but not God. So go back to the place where you fell and keep on going. Nikki Christian say, I know, wow, wow, 
Wow, one of the sons of Pastor Sunday. You are really a son yes. of Pastor. God has <laughs> raised. I celebrate you, she yeah, says. Thank you. Prince Paul says, I too am about to make history. Good. Right. Yetunde said, This is History Makers Online. That's so true. She, Sandra, said, I'm so moved and inspired by your testimony, bro. I know. I pray to see it one day and share my testimony on this platform too. Mm -hmm. Pastor Sunday is a destiny helper. Yeah, I'm waiting for all of you. Come right. and see me. Right. Nigeria uh, Arai says, if we do not discover and work in our purpose, we cannot be fulfilled, right? Uh, Peter says, where can we get the hardcover of your books in the USA? Okay, yeah, you can get them on Amazon. You just order for my books on Amazon. You can order... Uh, you are, I mean, sorry, who am I? Uh, why am I here? You know, that's a, one of the books that's talking about this topic. You order for it on Amazon and you get the hardcover. Uh, you can order any of my books there. Just go to Amazon and ask Sunday Adelaide. Or if you are in Africa, go to Okada Books and uh, online and you'll be able to get the hardcovers of these books. And also, Tiger Depre said, Thank you, Pastor. I feel what I know he's saying. And I want to openly say, Thank you, Pastor. Indeed, you are God sent to our generation. Thank yes. you, thank you. Flair Karim Matip say, brother, Flair, why so short this time? Normally you write longer. I'm, I'm getting, I got used to your long writing, but this one is so <laughs> short comment you have, Flair. Brother, I think you have to also exploit the area of comedy or theater. <laughs> I keep on laughing as I was listening to you. <laughs> Because a speaker actually is a comedian as well. Uh, Ugo Emeka Ebigbo said, Read, read, read. Don't be limited by academic curriculum. Accept responsibility. Don't shy away from the stage. Don't work for money so as not to be a slave to money. It's not too late to, be, to start. Everyone can purposefully fulfill destiny. Thank you, Pastor Anno. Thank you, uh, Pastor thank Sunday. You. Emmanuel Oluwagbebega said, This is a wonderful testimony. Oluwato, he said, I know you. What, well, that was awesome. Very awesome. I celebrate you. Thank you. <laughs> Samuel Kalu said, when God said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, it meant that, it meant that everything is possible to any man or woman who believes in themselves that what God has said is real and tangible. Mkem Dike said, I joined you also. I know to say thank you to Pastor Sunday for being a world changer. Thank you, Uncle. Basil Elibo said, Well said, bro. Honor to you, Pastor Sunday. I have also learned a lot from you. God's mercies to your family, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Comfy here said, Thank you for what you are doing for people. Thank you, too. Kazim says, the world is changing for the manifestation. That means the world is waiting for the manifestation of sons of God. Yes. Femi Oshunjaye said, David, Joseph started living early, both at age 17. Even Jesus at age 12. I know you are blessed to have this understanding while still in school. The Lord is with you. God is really using Pastor Sunday to enlighten our minds. Mm. Femi he said, your platform should be an avenue to fulfill purpose, not to make money. Wow. That is what is happening at churches in Nigeria now. God will help us. Phyllis Meek say, oh, this young man is such a blessing and encouragement as a mother. Play, praise God for you. Niyi Olushola said, in Nigeria, and maybe in most developing countries, we go to school to come out of poverty rather than to, to fulfill purpose. That is what informs. Uh, that is what informs the profession many shoes. 
eventually, after spending many years training in the wrong profession, we abandon it to do something else. Rather than train to be a teacher, I read electrical engineering because teaching was not too creative or recognized. Not now, I'm trying to get into teaching 20, after 25, 25 years after I left university. So sad, but rather late than never. And uh, uh, the next one, uh, I, I heard me, Bobby, say thank you very much, brother. God bless you. Flair said, I like the word explore that you use. Nikki said, people have been programmed in their minds from the beginning. It's time to start deprogramming people from the slavery mindset. That's so true. Shegun Lawal said, my brother, you are doing a very great and wonderful job by reminding us all the, 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 about those mind-blowing messages of Pastor Sunday that he has preached here. It is a great blessing to be part of this great platform to bring God's kingdom to the world. The world must be changed by His grace upon our life. This fire will spark across the globe. Pastor Sunday, the result that will come out of what you are teaching will amaze you because you are raising many sons unto glory. Yes. Glory to God. Another key Pastor Sunday gave us is listening effectively from Timothy Jayola. Ola Martin said, Thank you, Pastor Arnu, for the testimony. I give God thanks for Pastor Sunday for allowing God to use you to transform lives and to direct us to the right path. Eric Lindu said, thank you, bro. I know for your testimony. Go ahead, brother. The revolution is already going on. <laughs> the revolution has begun. Yeah. Femi Ige said, I have similar testimony. I thought I would become a banker counting money until I found the truth about that, that I'm supposed to be an illuminator, mm -hmm. counting men for God instead of counting money. And not counting money for men. <laughs> counting <laughs> Men for God instead of counting money for men. Brother, I know with anger for your life. Thank God. Uh, Yetunde says, thank you for this beautiful testimony. I know every word that you've uttered this morning has been so powerful and so penetrative. Wow. You are a masterpiece on your own. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Uh, Basil says, this is not about performing miracles, but about leading your soul to the right path eternally. Mm -hmm. God is great. <laughs> Ego, Ugo Emeka Ebibo said, the God's purpose for creating me is to make a global kingdom uh, solution, pro to be, yeah, a pro solution provider. No more small thinking, no more fooling around. Thank God. Modupe said, my life will never remain the same. Nosa said, it's paganism. He said, how we have been doing church is paganism. Mm. 